good morning students so uh, in the last class we were discussing about the different types of indicators so we have already discussed uh, um, that is uh, indicators and the last uh, portion we were discussing about uh, olfactory indicators olfactory indicators means you know uh, there are certain substances which uh, change their order in acidic and basic medium they are called uh, olfactory indicators there are certain substances which change their order in acidic and basic medium they are called olfactory indicators example onion clove oil then vanilla extract onion clove oil and vanilla extract they are known as uh, they are some of the examples for olfactory indicators because they change their order in acidic and basic medium so in acidic medium in acidic medium onion they have some characteristic order they uh, have onion smell or the characteristic order of onion in acidic medium and in basic medium in basic medium they do not show any characteristic smell no characteristic smell and clove oil clove oil also they retains the smell of clove oil in acidic medium they retain their smell and uh, in basic medium there is no characteristic smell in for clove oil and vanilla extract is also uh, they have uh, they retain their smell and uh, in basic medium also there is no characteristic order for vanilla extract so uh, these are called olfactory indicators olfactory indicators are the substances they show uh, a change in its order in acidic and basic medium they are called uh, olfactory indicators so these are the indicators so we have discussed so far uh, natural indicators synthetic indicators and olfactory indicators so these are all about indicators now we are going to study about some of the chemical properties of acids and bases chemical properties of acids and bases uh, here uh, we are first we are the first reaction first of uh, first chemical property the first reaction between acids and metals reaction between acids and metals uh, before dealing with this topic you should know uh, the reactivity series you know uh, metals are arranged in the uh, in the order as per their reactivity so that is called a reactivity series and we know that order uh, there is a particular uh, short form is there to uh, to memorize those uh, reactivity series that is that you have already studied in, in eighth standard then uh, let us see what is the reaction what, what are the reactions uh, taking place between metals and acids uh, first take uh, for that in order to uh, understand in this concern this reaction take uh, we are taking one a test tube in that test tube you take uh, uh, about uh, 5 ml of dilute sulfuric acid 
you take 5 ml of dilute sulfuric acid in a test tube. Then add a few pieces of zinc granules, zinc granules into this few pieces of zinc granules and then uh, you also arrange a cork a rubber cork on the uh, on the uh, uh, top portion of the boat uh, this test tube and also arrange you also insert a tube that is called a delivery tube this is called a delivery tube then this delivery tube is dipped in a trough a trough and that trough contains soap solution so uh, test tube in that test tube we have taken uh, some amount that is here we take 5 ml of dilute sulfuric acid and you add zinc granules into it and then uh, it is closed with a rubber cork and through that cork uh, put a hole and insert a delivery tube and that delivery tube is uh, that is uh, passed into a trough that contain soap solution. So, uh, you can see that uh, on the surface of zinc granules some bubbles are forming some bubbles are produced on the surface of uh, zinc granules and these bubbles are or these uh, gases are evolved and they allow to pass through the delivery tube and they finally falls in this soap solution. So, when they fall in this soap solution they produces bubbles and these bubbles are evolved out these bubbles are evolved out and uh, when a burning candle when a burning candle or burning matchstick uh, when it is if it is burning matchstick or uh, burning candle. So, uh, this when we uh, bring a burning candle near to these bubbles actually these bubbles also contain what it contains a gas and these bubbles will burn with a pop sound will burn with a pop sound. So, when these bubbles are burning with a pop sound that indicates the evolved gas or the gas that is present inside the bubbles are hydrogen gas that is hydrogen gas that is why they burn with a, a pop sound pop sound. So, what is happening here zinc granules is a metal zinc that is metal react with the acid they produce hydrogen gas along with hydrogen gas they also produce their uh, here in this uh, test tube you can also see uh, metal salt. So, what is happening here metal react with the acid and it forms metal salt plus H 2 that is hydrogen gas H 2 we can represent like this because uh, that hydrogen gas is evolving that is why this arrow mark represent that is evolving out and this metal salt that is present in the solution. This is the general reaction or this, this is the general representation or the final representation of uh, the reaction between acids and metals. So, when an acid react with the metal it forms metal salt plus hydrogen gas. Uh, this is an example uh, when when we take a uh, take a test tube inside the test tube you take some amount of acid that is dilute sulfuric acid or dilute hydrochloric acid any acid you can take. Then uh, we put some zinc granules and you can see that some bubbles or some gas are evolving out from this uh, uh, this mix or from uh, on the surface of the zinc granules and that gas is allowed to pass through the delivery tube and then uh, when, when it reaches the uh, trough that contains soap solution bubbles are formed and when these bubbles are going out when we bring a burning ma uh, burning candle near to these bubbles that bubbles will burn with the pop sound that indicates 
the gas inside the bubble is what hydrogen. So, when metal react with the acid it forms metal salt plus hydrogen and another thing is that all metals will not react in this manner because the metal which are placed above the hydrogen in the reactive series. The metals which are placed above the hydrogen in the reactivity series can displace hydrogen from acid. Not all metals, the metals which are placed above the hydrogen in the reactivity series. It will displace hydrogen from their salt and they produce and they form hydrogen gas. So, it is also a type of displacement reaction. So, it is also a type of displacement reaction because metal displaces metal displaces hydrogen from the acid that is why it is called a displacement reaction and the formation of hydrogen the formation of hydrogen depends on the strength of acid when the strength of acid is more it will produce more hydrogen if the strength of acid is very weak for example acetic acid all acids are giving uh, this reaction but the amount of hydrogen produced will be different that depends on the react uh, the uh, strength of the acid as well as the reactivity of metals if the metal is highly reactive then it will give uh, this reaction in a fast manner it will react in a fast manner why because if, if the metal is highly reactive and if the if the acid is strong then it will give a ready reaction and uh, that reaction will produce more amount of hydrogen gas. So, only those metal can displace hydrogen which are placed above the hydrogen in the reactivity series. So, uh, this is the reaction between uh, acids and metals and we did not write the uh, chemical equation between this acid and uh, uh, metal here we have taken zinc the symbol, uh, symbol of uh, zinc granule is zinc Z n plus then here we have taken sulfuric acid. So, H 2 S O 4 Z n plus H 2 S O 4 gives. So, what we get <coughs> we get metal salt. So, here metal is zinc metal salt here is zinc sulphate Z n S O 4 plus H 2 this H 2 will be evolved out. If we take another example, for example, magnesium, when magnesium react with another acid, uh, we take uh, HCl, hydro hydrochloric acid. So, it forms metal salt that is MgCl2 plus H2. Take another example, um, here uh, we are taking a weak acid, for example, uh, sodium sodium react with the acetic acid, acetic acid is a weak acid then it forms CH 3 COO Na plus H 2 is not it. So, these are the reactions happening between acids and metals ok. These are some of the reactions the acid react with the metals to form metal salt and hydrogen gas. I hope you understood the reaction between acids and the metals. Now, next the reaction between And uh, this reaction, the reaction between acids and metal, it is also known as redox reaction because uh, oxidation and reduction is happening here. So, uh, I am just telling that uh, uh, it is not uh, uh, the reaction between acid and metal, it is a redox reaction. You know what is redox reaction? Redox reaction means oxidation and reduction is taking place simultaneously, that is called a redox reaction. And in this reaction, metal is undergoing oxidation and hydrogen, hydrogen in the acid they undergo reduction. 
So it is a redox reaction and also it is an exothermic reaction. It is also an exothermic reaction. You know what is exothermic reaction? We have studied uh, in lower classes exothermic reaction means the reaction uh, which is accompanied by evolution of heat or you in a reaction along with the product some heat energy is produced that is called exothermic reaction. So, this reaction is exothermic reaction, redox reaction and displacement reaction metal displaces hydrogen from acid ok that is the reaction between acids and metals. Next we are going to discuss about the reaction between bases and metals. bases and metals. Um, here all bases will not react with the uh, uh, all metals will not react with the bases. Only few metals will undergo uh, the reaction between uh, reaction with the uh, bases. That is um, take an example zinc when zinc react with uh, a base that is sodium hydroxide, when zinc react with uh, a base sodium hydroxide, it forms it also forms the same that is uh, it is a salt that is called as sodium zincate sodium zincate sodium zincate plus hydrogen that is here also metals react with the base it forms metal salt and hydrogen it also evolves hydrogen. But this reaction is not uh, uh, that is not happening in all metals only few metals will undergo this type of reactions. I will take another example aluminum. Aluminum react with the uh, sodium hydroxide, it forms it forms So, here when aluminum react with sodium hydroxide that is aqueous aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide it produces a salt that is called a sodium aluminate sodium aluminate and also it gives hydrogen. So, here also uh, metals react with the basis it forms salt plus hydrogen. So, this is the reaction between uh, bases and metals and this reaction that is all metals will not give this type of reaction only few metals are giving this type of reaction and uh, so this is the reaction between bases and metals. Okay. Then the next reaction is the reaction between um, acids and metal carbonates or bicarbonates. the reaction between acids and metal carbonates or metal bicarbonate metal bicarbonate otherwise known as hydrogen carbonates hydrogen carbonate. Now, uh, in order to understand uh, this reaction take another example uh, we take uh, two test tubes we take two, te uh, two test tubes in one test tube you take uh, sodium carbonate Na2CO3 sodium carbonate 
and in another test tube you take sodium hydrogen carbonate otherwise known as sodium bicarbonate ok. We have, we have taken two test tube in one test tube you have you take sodium carbonate and in another test tube take uh, that is is only powder not ok some sodium bicarbonate. Then add few, dro a few drops of HCl dilute hydrochloric acid into this uh, test tube each that is in uh, sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate or sodium hydrogen carbonate. Then you can see uh, some bubbles are forming in these test tubes that is called effervescence it is called a effervescence or otherwise called brisk effervescence effervescence that is uh, just like froth froths are coming or bubbles are coming out that is called effervescence when hydrochloric dilute uh, hydrochloric acid or dilute sulfuric acid is added to sodium carbonate you can see effervescence are uh, there is an effervescence that is called a brisk effervescence brisk effervescence that is bubbles are forming and uh, that is you can take uh, you know marble when we pour some acid to marble on uh, the floor marble floor you can see some bubbles are coming out uh, some sound sound is coming that is called effervescence ok. So, uh, why because uh, what is marble marble and this chalk they are different forms of calcium carbonate it is a form of calcium carbonate. So, here also carbonate is there here bicarbonate is there. So, uh, when we pour acid to carbonate or bicarbonate metal carbonate or metal bicarbonate some bubbles are coming out and here it is not over you uh, close the test tube with uh, a rubber cork close the test tube with the rubber cork. So, you can do these experiments uh, separately and then insert a delivery tube into this test tube and then the gas that is evolving out from this mixture is allowed to pass through another test tube and in this test tube you are taking lime water. Lime water what is lime water that is calcium hydroxide calcium hydroxide aqueous solution of calcium hydroxide is called a lime water. So, what is uh, what you are doing here you are passing this gas that is you allow to pass this gas into another test tube which contain lime water which contain lime water. So, what is happening here lime water turns milky it turns milky lime water turns milky. So, why it is happening what is the re reason for this milkiness of this lime water lime water turns milky. And then uh, if you allow to pause that carbon uh, so what is happening here you know when uh, acid react with the metal carbonate metal carbonate or metal bicarbonate a gas is evolving and that gas is what it is carbon dioxide gas it is carbon dioxide gas. So, that carbon dioxide gas when we allow to pass into another test tube containing lime water that lime water turns milky lime water turns milky the milkiness of lime water is due to the formation of insoluble calcium carbonate calcium carbonate. So, there in that test tube calcium carbonate is formed and again if we allow to pass continuously or excess amount of carbon dioxide into this test tube you can see that that milkiness will disappear the milkiness will disappear and the disappearance of milkiness is due to the formation of soluble soluble calcium hydrogen carbonate soluble 
calcium hydrogen carbonate or otherwise called calcium bicarbonate. We will write the equations that is. So, what is happening here first case that is when we add when we add HCl that is hydrochloric acid into sodium carbonate. So, they form NaCl plus it also produce carbon dioxide plus what that is. Sodium carbonate react with the hydrochloric acid it forms sodium chloride plus carbon dioxide plus water. And in another test tube sodium bicarbonate that is NaHCO3 react with the hydrochloric acid it forms sodium chloride plus carbon dioxide plus water. See. So, generally what we can uh, write that is metal carbonate metal carbonate or metal bicarbonate metal carbonate or metal bicarbonate react with the acids it forms metal salt plus carbon dioxide plus water. So, this is the general reaction happening between sodium carbonate and sodium carbonate uh, sorry, bicarbonate sodium carbonate or sodium bicarbonate with the acids. Okay. So, then uh, what we do what we did in the in this experiment that is we allowed to pass this carbon dioxide into another test tube that contains what lime water. So, what is happening the that is calcium hydroxide that is called lime water. So, lime water react with the carbon dioxide it forms C A C O 3 plus water. So, the milkiness of this lime water is due to the formation of calcium carbonate this is the milky color milk, milkiness is due to the formation of calcium carbonate. And then what we did when we allow that uh, when uh, if we are uh, uh, passing excess amount of carbon dioxide into this mixture uh, we saw that uh, the milkiness is disappearing that is due to what that is happening here see calcium carbonate plus H 2 O is there then again if we are passing carbon dioxide. So, it forms C A H C O 3 twice that is called that is called calcium bicarbonate and that calcium bicarbonate is soluble in water that is why the milkiness disappears. Okay. So, this is the reaction between metal carbonates and bicarbonates with the acids I hope you understood. Uh, the reaction between these. So, all these reactions are very important because I think last uh, for the last exam last uh, public exam this uh, questions this question is asked. Uh, so, this is uh, is very important portion. So, you have to study all these uh, chemical equations very careful that is balanced chemical equation and um, so sometimes this uh, the this type of questions may ask. Uh, um, uh, in indirect way. So, it is not in a direct way, in direct way they may ask. So, uh, these reactions are very important. So, you have to study well. Okay. Now, we move on to the next topic. So, all these uh, chemical equations you have to uh, write and study. If, if you are just uh, reading and uh, studying you will not memorize those things it is uh, just like a mathematics how you are doing how you are practicing mathematics uh, the same way you have to practice these chemical equations. Okay. So, you can take uh, uh, <coughs> some rough note or some uh, uh, news prints and then you can work out this type of chemical equations. Now, 
Next, uh, we are moving into the another topic that is um, reactions of metals with the sorry uh, reactions of acids reactions of acids with the metal oxides. reactions of acids with the metal oxides. So, metal oxides we know we have studied in lower classes uh, metal oxides are basic in nature they are basic in nature because uh, I think in 8th standard um, we did one experiment in the lab that is uh, when we burn magnesium ribbon and we can see that that magnesium ribbon will burn with the dazzling white flame you know dazzling white flame. Why? Because uh, it is burning after burning because it is an exothermic reaction after burning that ash burned ash when we dissolve in some amount of water and when we dip uh, red litmus paper that red litmus paper turns blue it means what? when red litmus paper turns blue that is due to the basic nature is not that is basic nature. So, uh, base uh, metal oxides are basic in nature. So, here we, we take another another uh, so metal oxide for example, copper oxide copper oxide uh, it is black in color when copper oxide is react with the uh, hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid it forms copper chloride plus what water copper chloride and this that is when we take some amount of copper oxide in a test tube and add few amount of uh, some uh, uh, amount of what dilute hydrochloric acid you can see that the black color change into blue green color blue green color blue green color and along with that it forms water. So, what is happening here when metal oxide react with the acid it forms CuCl2 is what it is a metal salt. So, metal salt plus water. So, this is similar to what neutralization reaction is not it what is neutralization reaction acid react with the base to form salt plus water in the same way this reaction is proceeding is not it. So, it is a is an example for neutralization reaction. So, metal oxide react with the acid it forms metal salt plus water is not it. So, that is the reaction between uh, another take another example uh, calcium oxide calcium oxide it is an uh, metal oxide react with the HCl it forms calcium chloride plus water then magnesium magnesium oxide react with the uh, H2SO4 H H magnesium sulfate plus water. So, that is happening between acids and metal oxides. So, it is a type of neutralization reaction it is another it is an example for neutralization reaction. So, this is the reaction between acids and metal oxide. Now, I hope you understood the reaction between these two because already uh, we have studied what is neutralization reaction In the same way this reaction is happening. So, <coughs> now the reaction between bases the reaction of bases with the non metal oxide. reaction between bases and a non metal oxide. Here also uh, I am just brushing up your memory that is uh, uh, non metal oxides what is the what is the nature of non metal oxide non metal oxides are acidic in nature is not it because uh, I think in 7th or 8th you studied uh, when we burn sulfur 
after burning that gas is allowed to enter into a test tube and then we close the test tube and we uh, we pour some water and then shake and when we dip uh, blue litmus pa uh, paper in that uh, solution that blue litmus turns red isn't it why because it is acidic in nature so non metal oxides are what they are acidic in nature so here we take an example for example sodium hydroxide when sodium hydroxide react with the, uh, a non metal oxide for example carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide so sorry take an example we take uh, calcium hydroxide calcium hydroxide is a base when it react with the non metal oxide it forms it forms calcium carbonate plus water calcium carbonate plus water so bases react with the non metal oxide carbon dioxide is a non metal oxide it is a non metal oxide is a base is a non metal oxide non metal oxide is what it is acidic in nature it means as a base plus acid salt plus water isn't it so uh, it is also a type of neutralization reaction so bases react with the non metal oxide and it forms salt plus water another example potassium hydroxide react with the carbon dioxide so what it forms k2co3 plus h2o k2co3 plus h2o so um, this is also a type of neutralization reaction so this is the reaction between uh, bases with the non metal oxides now next the reaction uh, reaction between acids and bases reaction between and bases this reaction is also you have studied in your lower classes but here uh, uh, you know that the reaction between acid and base it is called a neutralization reaction isn't it so by neutralization reaction after neutralization reaction we get metal salt plus water that is the uh, common reaction uh, and in your lower classes sometimes you may study it about um, uh, sodium hydroxide is a base it react with the hydrochloric acid it forms sodium chloride plus water is it so this is the neutralization reaction okay uh, reaction between acids and bases so uh, in order to explain this reaction we take a test tube in that test tube you take some amount of sodium hydroxide you take some amount of sodium hydroxide in this test tube then you add synthetic indicator that is phenolphthalein phenolphthalein we know phenolphthalein uh, what is the color of phenolphthalein neutral sta neutral stage that is colorless solution is a colorless solution and also in acidic solution it is colorless so when we add phenolphthalein into sodium hydroxide what is sodium hydroxide sodium hydroxide is a base so in basic medium what is the color change of phenolphthalein that is that color is changed into a uh, pink in color now the now the mix the reaction mixture is pink in color because when we add phenolphthalein one or two drops of phenolphthalein into sodium hydroxide it changes into 
pink color then uh, into that reaction mixture you add some dilute dilute hydrochloric acid dilute hydrochloric acid so you keep on adding into this mixture drop by drop so when we uh, when we are adding drop wise into this reaction mixture that is dilute hydro hydrochloric acid into this reaction mixture the color seems to be uh, lighter or it becomes lighter and finally it becomes colorless it becomes colorless then again uh, if you add one or two drops of sodium hydroxide into this reaction mixture again that reaction becomes pink in color did you understand firstly we are taking a test tube into that test tube we have taken uh, 2 or 3 ml of uh, sodium hydroxide solution and then you add phenolphthalein one or two drops of phenolphthalein so uh, sodium hydroxide solution is a colorless solution then when we add phenolphthalein at that time that mixture become or that solution becomes pink in color pink color then uh, into that reaction mixture we are adding uh, drop by drop that is dilute hydrochloric acid into that reaction mixture at that time you can see that the pink color is fading and finally it become colorless it become colorless then <coughs> after that you add one uh, uh, again one or two drops of what uh, sodium hydroxide solution sodium hydroxide so again it become pink in color it become pink in color then again if you are adding dilute hydrochloric acid after a uh, drop by drop after that you again it become colorless so what is happening here what is that color change that pink color is appear, uh, disappearing when we add dilute hydrochloric acid and when we add sodium hydroxide again it reappears so what is the reason for that so what is happening here when you add, we know that phenolphthalein uh, sodium hydroxide so uh, if we are adding phenolphthalein to sodium hydroxide phenolphthalein it's an indicator phenolphthalein changes the that is if it is a base it its color is pink in color but when we add dilute hydrochloric acid drop by drop at that time uh, the color is disappearing and finally it, it become colorless that colorless stage that is called the neutralization stage because at that stage hydrochloric acid neutralizes the base now at that stage it in that reaction mixture contains metal salt plus water again if you are adding sodium hydroxide at that time the pink color reappears why because at that stage the reaction mixture become becomes basic in nature when that is basic in nature then because here phenolphthalein is there that phenolphthalein indicator turns that mixture into pink color and again if you are adding dilute hydrochloric acid again it disappears it means so the reappearance of pink color due to the uh, why that is due to the uh, the reaction mixture turns to basic medium and it be, when it become colorless it may be acidic or neutral stage it may be acidic or neutral stage the first the, the drop a single drop if a single drop changes that pink color into colorless that will be the neutralization stage that will be the neutralization stage again if you are adding dilute hcl then it become what it is acidic the solution become acidic so uh, what is happening so acid react with the bases it forms salt plus water salt plus water so uh, <coughs> this is the reaction between acids and bases so this is also called a neutralization reaction neutralization reaction see all these reactions we will uh, discuss in the lab we will do all these experiments in the lab 
So, um, <coughs> here um, and also you are going to write those things in uh, record also. Okay. Now, the another topic is um, yes. Uh, in acids and uh, bases, what are the common things in acids and bases? What are the things present in acids and bases? And um, uh, we have studied about acids, different definitions for acids and bases. You know, uh, we have studied about Arrhenius concept of acids and bases, Bronsted Lowry concept of acids and bases. So, uh, in that concept, Acids are the substances they furnish us H plus ion in aqueous solution, is not Acids are the substances they furnish us H plus ion in aqueous solutions. Then the question is that all the compounds they contain hydrogen are acidic in nature, that they are acids. All the substances, all the substances which contain hydrogen is acidic in nature or not. In order to explain this, let us see uh, some examples. So, uh, we can uh, conduct one experiment that is we take we take a 100 ml beaker Hundred ml beaker, and then we uh, place a rubber cork in that beaker, and put two iron nails. Two iron nails. Then, uh, in this, we take dilute sulfuric acid. up to this level we take dilute sulfuric acid. Then these two iron nails are connected to a circuit that is 6 volt battery and then it is also connected to a bulb. So, this is the experimental uh, uh, setup. We take uh, a beaker 100 ml beaker, then uh, uh, here we have taken one rubber cork on that rubber cork we put two iron nails, these are the iron nails and then they are connected to a circuit and a 6 volt battery. Then uh, this is the key or switch. So, when the circuit is uh, here we have taken what dilute sulfuric acid. The same experiment can be done with the uh, dilute HCl then uh, uh, glucose, glucose you know that is C 6 H 12 O 6 that is called glucose and also we can take uh, alcohol, alcohol we can do this these experiments with the different solutions that is we can take dilute, dilute sulfuric acid dilute hydrochloric acid glucose and alcohol uh, take an example alcohol uh, ethanol c2 h5 oh that is called a ethanol see all these h2so4 hcl c6h12o6 c2h5oh all they contain what hydrogen all they contain hydrogen now when we for example here uh, the firstly we have taken dilute sulfuric acid then you switch on the key when the circuit is complete you can see that the bulb will glow it will glow the bulb will glow and then instead of dilute sulfuric acid if you are taken 
if you have taken dilute hydrochloric acid again when the circuit is complete you can see glowing of bulb the bulb will glow and if you are taking glucose or alcohol when the circuit is complete you can see there is no glowing of bulb the bulb will not glow in the case of glucose and alcohol glucose and alcohol why see all they contain hydrogen is not it all they contain hydrogen, but they are not there is no uh, glowing of there is no uh, electricity is passing through the circuit when if you are taking the solution the reaction mixture as, as uh, glucose or alcohol, but in the case of sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid it, the bulb will glow or there is a there is a flow of current through the circuit. So, what is the reason? The reason is that uh, all even though they are all they contain hydrogen, but they are not formed that is acids they form ions hydrogen ions in aqueous solution hydrogen ions in aqueous solutions acids they furnishes they gives H plus ion in its aqueous solution and these hydrogen ions are responsible for the conduction of electricity through the circuit. Hydrogen ion are responsible for the conduction of electricity through the circuit, but uh, if we are taking glucose or alcohol this glucose or alcohol they will not give any kinds of H plus ion or they will not give ions in its aqueous solutions because it, they are neutral solution they are neutral uh, solution that is why they will not give any H plus ions and if there is no H plus ion if there is no ions there is no flow of electricity that is why the bulb will not glow. If you take the same uh, the same experimental condition and if we take sodium hydroxide solution or a, a base there also you can see the bulb will glow. The reason is that instead of H plus ion in bases they give OH minus ion hydroxyl ion. So, these hydroxyl ions are responsible for the conduction of electricity in that experiment in that uh, in that uh, circuit. Okay. So, acids and bases they conduct electricity due to the formation of ions in their aqueous solutions acids form H plus ion bases form OH minus ion, but if we take glucose or alcohol the, uh, these type of neutral solutions they will not give any kind of H plus ion or OH minus ion that is why they will not conduct electricity they will not conduct electricity. I okay. uh, hope you understood and uh, so uh, these are the things uh, uh, we are discussed so far and uh, the next topic we will discuss in the next class. Okay. Have a nice day.